certainly good to see each one of you with us this morning. Would you get your hymnals turned to number 200? In your favorite hymns of praise, there are two hymnals back there. Favorite hymns of praise, number 200. Would you stand with us, please? <clears throat> prayer please <coughs> amen thank you for standing please be seated thank you Yeah. <laughs> 
had a head-on collision here. Amen. Boy, isn't that good? The Lord said rejoice. Say your name's written there. So, amen. We ought to be thankful that. I couldn't help but a thing, and I don't know why my, my mind just, well, I don't have to explain it to y'all. You know at this point. But I, I think I think about things a lot, and um, I was I was back in my study. I was thinking about this, and and I don't know. It just it just come to me, and you take it for what it's worth. But I was thinking about you know where the Bible said there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repented. And what what got me what got me in that part was. Can you imagine, I don't know about you, but I'm always honored when somebody cares about you. You know, it's always, I know what I, know what I am. I know who I am. And to think somebody would love you and care for you is just a, it's a humbling thought. Um, some of you that play sports, you'll know what I'm talking about. When, when, when people that love you are there and they're supporting you and they're cheering you on, that helps, doesn't it? Just think. Man, I'm surprised they'd even show up to encourage me. You know, I I ain't no good, really. I just, but man, I'm glad they think so. You know, but, you know, you're just glad to have somebody support you. And what? And I know this is just kind of that's a carnal uh, example there. But I was just thinking about really in heaven. I could, just couldn't imagine that Christ would be rejoicing because I got saved. Who? Why would He care about me? I'm so insignificant. Uh, I'm a nothing. I'm a nobody. I mean, why would why would why would I cause Christ to rejoice that He cared about me? I don't I don't know about you. We're a respecter of persons to degrees, and you know some people you know do things. It boy just thrills your heart because you you know them. You have a relationship with them. And then uh, somebody else you may not you know you kind of just don't. Well, they do something good, and it's like well, good for you. You know you don't have that. But Christ, I, I believe over every single sinner that repented, there's rejoicing in heaven. And the heart of Christ over every person against say that's how much he cares about you. Think about sitting there at a ball game. Some of you, carnal. Well, we're going to sports this morning, Sunday morning. Uh, uh, but think about being at a ball game. The other team scores. How many of you cheer? Well, that's somebody's daughter. That's somebody's son playing ball too, isn't it? But I ain't cheering for their team. I know that's silly this morning, but I'm not. I don't care if their kid makes a basket or he don't. I cared about zero touchdowns in that football game, but the ones my boys did. Maybe the team in general, but, you know, overall, my boys, you know. Come on now, we we'll respect your persons. We know somebody else does something good, we're not going to. But Christ over one said there's not a sinner that's ever breathed God's air. That Christ hasn't rejoiced over because every soul of every man ever born of Adam was in the bosom and the heart of God when he sent his son to die on Calvary and rise by his own power to, so that you and I could live forever whole and righteous and godly in the presence of heaven. I'm telling you, there's something about the love of God ought to stir you up when your name's recorded in the Lamb's book of life. And just think about that. Why would Jesus rejoice over me getting saved? I'm a nobody. I'm a nothing. I don't, I don't have anything to offer anybody. I was a negative. He didn't get no, no positive when he got me. And he still rejoiced when he said, oh, oh, hey, listen, heaven rejoiced when old Clint got saved. It's amazing to me. I don't understand that. Think of the billions and billions. We're pushing 8 billion people alive today. And there's some little old sinner out there somewhere that may not be cared for by this world. May not have a coat. May sleep out in the cold. May live in a tent. But I'm telling you, they'll repent and believe Jesus. There's rejoicing in the heavens and eternity in the heart of Jesus over somebody that will repent. That's how much Jesus loves you this morning. That when you got saved, it calls him to rejoice. Amen. Yeah, man, I, I think them angels joined him in that rejoicing. Do you think about that? Boy, isn't that something? I just sitting there thinking about it. I don't know why that, that just stirred me. I'm going to tell you what started it. I don't know how I got there from here. But in, 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 when Acts, I was studying my first Samuel. I was trying to get God's direction. And I was studying. And what took me there is I got to Acts where the Bible talked about and the patriarchs moved with envy. They sold Joseph. Into Egypt. And what's the very next part, the last part of that sentence? There's a comma, but God was with him. 
and stuff. Made me want to swing out over hell and fight the devil with a water pistol or whatever Dr. Lakin used to say. Dr. Lakin said I'd preach in hell if they'd let me out. He had a love for sinners, you know. And uh, when I think it's humbling, when I think about how much Jesus loved me, that he had rejoice over me. I, I just, I don't, hey, listen, it's enough that he even granted me the opportunity to get saved. But it wasn't that. It wasn't just because he had some obligation to some sense of righteousness that he had to offer it to you. Right? I think that's sometimes how we present it. God, God defines what that is. He's not obligated to some attribute that we've defined. Right? God is righteous. He is holy. And so there was nothing where God said, well, I've got to be holy. He says, I've got to be righteous. I've got to be just. I've got to be fair. That's just who God is. And we understand it and describe him by that. But he defines what that is. So there was nothing when you got saved, what I'm saying, for God so loved the world that whosoever. God didn't do that so he could say, well, somebody's going to say I'm not just. He did that because in his heart, in the heart, in the bosom of God, he loved every single human being that would ever walk this earth and wanted them to be saved and rejoices when they do get saved. <laughs> and it's precious to him when you leave here and get up there. God loves you this morning. I don't know what else is going on. And somebody may have done sold you into Egypt. But I'm going to tell you who's still with you. God's with you. Amen. Thank the Lord. All right, Amber, come on. Let's sing something. Come on, Taylor. Boys, let's go. I feel like singing. I got a song in my heart this morning. We ain't got but about two or three we know. But sometimes when I just get stirred up and I just want to worship the Lord, I'm going to sing. So if you'll bear with me, we're going to have our missionaries going to come here in a minute. Brother Knowles is with us, but we kind of know him, so we're just going to hear him preach pretty much this morning. You don't have a video, do you, this morning? You don't need one. You've got one. I think we'll just go with preaching this morning. We're, we're behind you. Uh, I, I, we're going to take him back on. I, I have every intentions of that. So we just want to hear you preach, brother. But uh, they don't want to hear me sing, so I'm going to sing first. And then you, you cover it up with the preaching, okay? All right, let's sing. Let's sing. If you got God's good, come on over here. you got to make us look good. Sit over here where they can see you. Let's see. Let me get right here because I can't see anymore. That's not a joke. Move up here a little bit. <laughs> It ain't good. <clears throat> As I look back on all of my days, so many times and so many ways, I have been blessed and all I can say is God is still good. Sometimes the night brings sorrow and pain, sometimes the tears fall like the rain. But through it all, he's never changed. God is still good. God is still good. When the waves roll high, God is still good. All through the night, when I've done all I can, and I don't understand, God is still good. Clouds of doubt may darken the waves, the showers. stumble and fall, but through it all, God is still good, mercy still flows from all the Clouds of doubt may darken the way. 
showers of blessings may come any day. He'll bring me through, yes. and I'll stand and say, God is still good. Yes. Yes. Amen, he is. I think I'm going to sing the chorus again, yes. because God is still good. Yes. He'll be good when I leave. He'll yes. be good when I go yes. home. He'll be good when I fail. He'll be good when I might muster up enough strength to do something right. God will still be good tonight. I'm telling you, when you go home and you feel like you've wasted the day, guess what? God is still good. And don't you forget that. God loves you. He's for you. And God is still good. You don't feel like it? Well, I, don't, I can't help you. But I can tell you this. God's still good. God is still good. Hey, I made a mess of some things, and God has still been good. My health has been terrible, and God is still good. Brother, Brother Phil Green, God is still good this morning. Hallelujah. God ought to put every one of us in hell, and He's still good. Mercy's still flowing. When you think you've exhausted the mercy of God, it's renewed every morning. It's still flowing in the palm of His hand. Hallelujah. That ought to not encourage nobody to see them this morning, but it encouraged me to want to keep on going for God because there's still mercy to be found. No one found grace because he is looking for it in a God that has an abundance of grace in his Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. God is still good. We're going to sing the chorus again, okay? You all help me out here. God is still good when the waves roll high. Yeah. God is still good all through the night when I've done all I can and I don't understand. God is still good. Clouds of doubt may darken the way, but showers of blessings may come any day. He'll bring me through and I'll stand and say, God is still good. That'll be good. I've, I've, I've shown myself this morning already, so I'm just stirred up my heart. I've tried my best. I couldn't hardly sleep. I've, I have studied. I've gone over that first Samuel, and I've gone over it, and uh, I've done my best to try to find the will of God, and uh, and uh, God just didn't just didn't give it to me. So. I normally don't do this on a Sunday morning, but I'm going to have to just mind God let Brother Knowles preach to us this morning. Brother Knowles has a real heart for lost people. And I want to tell you something, if you're in here lost this morning, you're in a good place. And uh, so you listen to our brother. I, I tell you, the Lord has blessed this man his family so much in the work that he's doing. I'm thrilled to get to be a part of it. So get your wallets out when the service is over. We're going to spend some money. No, I'm just kidding. No, but we do need to pick our brother back up. He's going back to the field, and we love him. So, preacher, you just come preach to us. You're welcome to say a few things about the ministry just to kind of get an update on folks. But we want to hear you preach. So, God bless you for being here this morning with us, preacher. Thank you, preacher. Love you. Love you. Amen. Amen. Ain't it good to be in church this morning? My preacher used to always say, and he said, I'm glad church sounds like church. Amen. And uh, I, I never understood what he meant by that. Amen. I was raised in an independent Baptist church, I mean, in a good church, and I never knew nothing but having church. Yeah. And uh, I, he'd always say that. I'd amen him because that's my preacher, and I didn't really understand it. Amen. Amen. But preacher, I got out and got out on the road, and oh, yeah. I found out that everybody don't have church. Amen. I found out there's places that church don't sound like church. I sure am glad this morning I'm in a place that yes. church sounds like church. Yes. Ain't just going to church. Church ain't something we go to. Yes. I'm glad I know what it is to have church. Yes. Amen. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I'm in a place, and it ain't about feelings, by the way, but I sure am glad I can feel something this morning. Yes. Amen. I know it's about facts and all that, so if you want to correct me afterwards, that's fine. Amen. But I, I, I'm glad in this thing of this Christian life, it's a relationship, yeah. and I'm glad that I can feel something. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I know there's times I don't feel saved. I don't feel called to preach sometimes. And if I lay an egg this morning, amen, I'll, it'll be one of those days, amen. But I'm glad this morning that I, that I feel something, amen. 
If somebody as big as the Holy Ghost of God moves on the inside of you, you ought to feel something. Amen. It's good to be here this morning. Thank you, preacher. And I just want to give a little short update, let everybody know what's going on. And, and uh, I want to say first, thank you, church, for your prayers, your support. Uh, uh, y'all, y'all have been behind us the whole time we was on the field. And uh, those of you that know, kept up with our prayer letters, you know that we was there uh, for about three years. We moved to the field in 2017. God blessed tremendously. We started a, a Blessed Hope Baptist Church under a mango tree. Didn't have nothing, and God blessed. And, and uh, we was able to start that church. It was there a year and a half. Turned that work over to a young man. And uh, that's work still going on great today. Since we've been gone, they've started a, a little Christian school. Uh, I was talking to them this week. They got 115 students there. And uh, thank God for that. They're hearing the gospel every day. Amen. And uh, Brother Bonnie, they don't have chapel service one day a week. He starts out every day preaching the gospel to them. Amen. And uh, thank God for that. We're, we've been able to purchase another acre of land there. And God's put in Pastor Bonnie's heart to start an orphanage. They have many, many orphans in that area. And uh, so we're, we're going to try our best to get behind them and, and uh, try, try to help them raise some money for a building. And uh, God's blessed, but you know we moved down to Bowen then after a year and a half and started a, a Welcome Baptist Church, started that in the ladies' yard and uh, moved, to, moved to a house, outgrew that, had a little storefront, outgrew that, and, and it's good to outgrow some things, amen, and uh, we was able to buy an acre of land, and from there we built a little building, and, and uh, the work continued to grow. We was there uh, for another year and a half, and, and uh, God blessed in that work. We had our Bible Institute there, and uh, the three and a half, the three years we was on the field, a over three years, we graduated nine students from our Bible Institute. Out of those nine, five of those went out and started uh, Bible-believing independent Baptist churches, and we thank God for that. And uh, have about 40-something students that we've still been doing correspondence courses with, and uh, had the school ministry. God allowed us the privilege to preach to sometimes upwards of 5,000 high school students at one time, and uh, God is blessed in that. And uh, 2020, we came off the field in February, and and uh, came home on our normal furlough. And, and here, here's why we're back racing support, getting ready to go back. Uh, we came off the field. My mom and my wife's mom both were dealing with Alzheimer's. And, and we had a choice to make. Uh, uh, was we just going to put them in a nursing home or was we going to come home and take care of them? And uh, I, I believed it was right. And, and I thought that was right. So that's what we did. Uh, it, it wasn't like we left the ministry in a, in a bad time. And, and I know some folks and, and leave and leave churches different times because they're going through a struggle, but it wasn't that. We was up here. We was on a mountaintop. We was seeing folks saved. I mean, Welcome Baptist Church there. It was like we was having revival every Sunday we met. We was seeing folks saved literally weekly. We was seeing somebody saved. And, and uh, it was during that time that God led us to step away to take care of our parents. And, and at the time, preacher, it felt like God was ripping my heart out of my chest because that's where God put me. Amen. And, uh, but we came off the field and, and uh, went back to doing, doing what I knew to do. And, and uh, we were still preaching on the weekends. I'd done some interim work at a church and had a church call me and said, uh, said would you come be a pastor? And, that, and, and I thought about it for a while and, and uh, I said, okay, let's schedule time. I'll come preach. And, and uh, I, I, a little church in Smith Station, Alabama down there. And, and uh, I, I got about time to go and, and I did, did not have peace in my heart. And I had to call him up, preacher. I said, look, I, I'm not coming. I said, look, this is, I'm not even going to come and act like I'm going to come, pastor. This ain't what God has for me no more. And uh, so I knew I was going back to the field. And, and so I went back to doing what I knew to do. I was preaching on the weekends, but I started a trucking business back. That's what I, that's what I did. That's what I knew. And so I bought two trucks and and uh, so we, we, that's what we did. And we kept the ministry going. And God blessed during that time. We was able to build a pastor's house and, and uh, build a more permanent building for, uh, for Blessed Hope Baptist Church and able to buy another acre of land there. I mean, God blessed throughout that year. And, and uh, January of 2021, we went back just to check on things. Nothing had changed at the time. But I remember that first day there, uh, God got a hold of my heart and he said, Lord, uh, he, he said, this is time. The Lord said, this is time to go back. 
And I didn't understand at the time, preacher, I didn't understand it. And, uh, but but uh, I, I've learned through the years that it's right to follow the Lord, Amen. no matter what. We don't always understand. Yeah. And uh, I, the, in the back of my mind, it was I was thinking to myself, what in the world? Uh, I've done come off the field. I told everybody I'm coming off the field, take care of my parents and, and, and don't understand. Now I'm going to tell them I'm going back and nothing's changed. And, and, uh, but but I, I was going through my mind. And sometimes God will tell you to do things like that. It don't make sense. Amen. But you see, God knew what tomorrow holds, Amen. and I don't. Amen? Amen? God knew that my mom was fishing to take a turn for the worse and pass away, and Amen. Debbie's mom was going to get worse, and we didn't know those things yeah. at the time, but God did. Amen. And it's always right to do what God says. Amen. And so that's what we did. So March the 5th, we, we had a meeting with our mission board. They they done all the preliminaries and and, uh, and, and rechecked us out and all that again. And, and so they voted us back in with Prayer Baptist Missions on March the 5th. And I didn't call nobody until then. I wanted to make sure everything, where all the support would just go straight to our mission board. And, and so March 5th then, we started making calls. And again, nothing had changed at this time. And so uh, here I was with about $100,000 worth of debt, two trucks, and a business. And it wasn't the best time to be selling a business, by the way. You know how the economy was. And, and uh, so here I was sending out prayer letters, calling preachers, telling them, hey, here's what's going on. And uh, back in my mind, I'm thinking, how in the world am I going to do this? I'm having to work every day, and, and uh, I, I'm going to tell folks I'm going to mission field, but yet I'm working a full-time job running a business. But uh, I, I, again, I don't know what God knows. And, and on March the 25th, I didn't know God was going to send the answer to that, take care of all the problems. Uh, March 25th, we sitting in the house. I was getting ready to, I done went to bed about 10 o'clock at night. And I was getting ready to leave out about 1 o'clock the next morning with a load. And, and my wife called me and said, get up, there's a tornado coming. And we live in Alabama, we hear that all the time. I said, uh, I said don't worry about it, don't wake me up. I said, I'm tired. I've got to get up early. But anyway, long Long story short, the sirens went off, and here about another 30 minutes, uh, we took a direct hit in our house. We were sitting in the closet, an F3 tornado. Uh, we took a direct hit, and but uh, thank goodness none of us was hurt, none of our neighbors. But you know what was sitting in the yard? Both of those trucks were sitting in the yard. Both of them had full coverage insurance. Both of them was totaled out, completely paid off. And, and at the time, I didn't understand. And I was thinking, Lord, you're tearing my world apart. And, and uh, give me a few days, let the dust settle. I looked back and I said, Lord, you just fixed my world. Amen. And that's exactly what God did. Amen. Uh, it's like God said, I put you on the field the first time. I'll put you back on the field the second time. So we're about 96% of our support now. Uh, praying to get the last bit. We've already set a tentative date of moving in June, uh, 1st of June, Lord willing. My youngest son will be staying behind this time, so you pray for us on that. Uh, but he'll be joining the National Guard there, going to college here, working at our, our sending church. But uh, you pray for us. That's our, that's our plan. We'll be moving back in June, ready to get back, and I'll uh, be starting our third church plant, Lord willing, in the city of Ginger. So you pray for us. This will be our first work in the city, uh, but, but what a great need there. I mean, there's, uh, there's new plants moving into that town. It's about 500,000 now. They're moving in two new plants and uh, an auto plant and something else. So we're looking for that town to grow and, and uh, what an opportunity we have. So you pray for us, God, to give us direction as to where to start that ministry, what, what God would have us to do. And we're, we're, we're excited about that. Already scheduling. We've got a Bible Institute ske uh, classes scheduled. Miss Debbie's got a ladies' meeting scheduled. And we have a prayer retreat scheduled for our national pastors there and, and uh, working on a revival service there in that town. We're going to have a, a citywide uh, meeting, Lord willing, uh, to try to kick off that meeting. A whole lot we got planned for this year. Working on planning the medical clinic and uh, we, just read, we just need to get there. Amen. And so you pray for us that God will help us. God will supply each and every need. And I want to say thank you again, Pastor. Thank you, church, for your supporting you in the past and uh, thank you for all you've done. Amen. It's good to be in God's house this morning. You got your Bibles this morning. I'm opening them up to the book of Hebrews. Book of Hebrews. Now, I was enjoying the preaching this morning already. Amen. Uh, I, I, was, I was wanting to just continue on. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 this morning. I want to read one verse of Scripture. And then I'm going to come back and comment on some more. And try to share a little thought God put on my heart the other day. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9. If you get there, say amen. amen. All right. Let's read this verse 9. It says, 
But we see Jesus. That'll be my text. But we see Jesus. I can't think of a better subject to preach. I can't think of something else, something better to look at than Jesus. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. We ought to hit pause right there and just out that he was willing to taste death for you and I. Amen. Amen. Let's pray this morning. Father, we love you today. Lord, we thank you today, God. Lord, to be in the house of God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, this morning that we know you as our Lord and our Savior. Lord, we thank you today, God, for the blood that you shed on Calvary. We thank you, Lord, that you went to Calvary in our place. Lord, we thank you for the Word of God that we get to open and read this morning. And Lord, I thank you that we can be in the church house this morning and God feel something in our heart today. And Lord, but we ask you now as we come and we stand behind your sacred desk, God, we need your help this morning. God, I can't do what you've called me to do in my own, Lord. Uh, Lord, that we don't need an outline this morning, God. We need some Something from heaven today. God, and I pray today that you'd fill me with the Holy Ghost. Help me one more time. God, use me, God, I pray, to be a blessing and a help to this church, to this pastor. God, if there's one lost this morning, God, I pray that you'd arrest them, show them, God, convince them, draw them, God, to Calvary. Lord, bring them to a place of repentance, God. Let them be born again into the family of God. And Lord, whatever you do, Lord, we're going to thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we look at this book of Hebrews here, I want to I wanna sort of bring you up to verse 9 and give you a little foundation of where we're coming from. Uh, but we see this book of Hebrews here. It was written to uh, the names of giveaway, amen, to the Hebrews. Uh, it was written to that early, uh, those early Jewish believers there. And, and it was written to try to correct some things. If, as you'll, if you'll study there, you'll see that, that even the, uh, those early Christians, James and some of the leaders of that church in Jerusalem there, some of them was actually mingling some law with grace. Well, you see, when Paul came back after those years and reported back in, uh, uh, you, you see there the, the mingling there where uh, when he was taken and, and sent to Rome, what happened there, they was trying to get him uh, to, to come in there. And it was to, he told Paul, said, said, you see how many believers we have here that are zealous for the law. And you see, they were still trying to cling to those elements of the law. And, and friend, we can't mix law and grace. Amen. And so he was writing this to show them that there's a better way. And you see, there's a key word throughout this, this book here is better. And he's telling them in chapter 1, there's one that's better than the angels. You see, there's a better sacrifice. Uh, you see, it's not a lamb that we need. It's the lamb. He is the lamb. You see, there's a better sacrifice. There's a better way than Judaism. That way is the way, the truth and the life. A uh, friend, he's telling them there's some things better. Chapter 3, he says there's one that's better than Moses. A uh, uh, friend, they all looked up to Moses and, and nearly worshiped Moses. But he said there's one better than Moses. There's one better than Aaron, friend. We have forever a priest after the order of Melchizedek, not after that. Aaronic uh, priesthood there. But we see that word better here. And he's telling them this. But look through these verses here. Verse 1 says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest any time we should let them slip. Uh, and he's talking about some things that we've heard. In chapter 1 he says, In time, sundry times past, he said, uh, God spoke to us through the prophets. But in his last days have spoken unto us through his Son. And he's saying some things that he said. He said, well, don't let them slip. Uh, uh, friend, there's some danger in letting this truth slip. Uh, and I preached on that verse 1, on standing on a slippery slope, uh, if we're not careful, friend, if we fail to heed what this word says, uh, uh, fail to heed the witness of the saints, the warning of the preacher, the wooing of the Holy Ghost, friend, we're standing on a slippery slope. Uh, but he said, don't let them slip. Verse 2, he said, for if the word was spoken by angels was steadfast, uh, and every transgression and disobedience received a just rep recompense of reward, he said, beware. Friend, you said if the word spoken by angels was steadfast. Right. We see those in the Old Testament that disobeyed. And, and the New Testament example there, Zacharias, uh, when he failed to believe the angel when he told him about John the Baptist. There was, a, there was a consequence for him not obeying. It's even more so, friend, for what God said. There's a consequence for us disobeying his word. Verse 3 says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great of salvation? 
There is no other remedy for sin. There is no other way. Friend, there is, uh, you see, there, there is, there's a danger neglecting the only remedy for sin, and that is salvation by grace through faith. Amen. So we see that, but that's what he's saying here. Verse 4, he says, God bearing them witness. With signs and wonders and, uh, and divers miracles, gifts of the Holy Ghost. You see, God confirmed His Word. Yes, yes. You see, in that it, it, when, the, when these, these apostles was preaching this, you got to understand, they didn't have the privilege of what we have today. Amen. You know, we've got it better than any other Christians you have in the Bible today because we have this right here. You see, uh, the Apostle Paul and, and Peter, God used them to pin it down, but they didn't have the privilege that you and I have Amen. to hold the Bible with 66 Amen. books in it. Amen. Those prophets of the Old Testament, God gave them vision, but they didn't even understand some of those visions God had given them. They didn't even understand all those prophets. It was a mystery to them. But what a privilege it is today to hold in our, in our hands the complete, perfect, inerrant, infallible, preserved Word of God. Amen. Amen. And I believe it's preserved and infallible and perfect in the King James Version. Amen. I believe that. If you don't, then I will just have to agree to disagree. Amen. You can, you've got a right to be wrong. Amen. That's what my preacher always said. You've got a right to be wrong. But you see, we, we have that there. Uh, and, and you see, God confirmed it. You see, but when they preached that, you see, uh, there was false teachers, false prophets in their days just like there is now. And how you knew what these apostles were saying was right. God bear, bore witness with them with signs, miracles. They had, that, they had the power to do those things. We don't have that today. Say so when, when that which is perfect is come, 1 Corinthians 13, that which is in part shall be done away. I'm glad we have something perfect today. We don't need the signs. We don't need the miracles. We don't need all that. Friend, the Jews require a sign, friend. But God says, God said he wants us just to believe. Amen. You see, but we see that then. Verses 5 through 7, we see who's in charge of this thing. When God created man, he put man in the garden and put him in, 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 dominion, over, in dominion over everything. Adam sinned and, and lost that. You see, but God has, putting, has put Christ back in, in charge of everything. For we see that in verses 5 through 7. Verse 7 says, Thou madest him a little lower, lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and didst set him over the works of thy hands. He's in charge today. Amen. Look at verse 8. It says, Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in, uh, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. You see, everything is under his realm and his control today. The rest of that verse says, but now we see not yet all things put under him. We're living in a day and time today. We're living in verse 8 right there. Friend, he is on the throne and he is ruling and reigning in the affairs of man. But man doesn't see that. Friend, they, they don't see that. They don't recognize that. They hate him. Friend, this world hates Christ. They don't mind religion. They don't mind, they don't mind, uh, the, the, they don't mind religion. They don't even mind the baby Jesus so much on Sunday. But it's the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that's ruling and reigning that they don't like. But friend, there's coming a day when every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that, and all will be put under subjection under him. But until then, verse 9, but we see Jesus. As we're waiting, we see Jesus. That's what I want to preach on this morning. But we see him. That's a, that's a definite statement right here. He says, but we see Jesus. I'm glad today, friend, that we can see him by the eye of faith. Uh, uh, friend, it's not seeing, it's believing. Uh, that's what this world says. If you'll show me, I'll believe that. It's the way it works, friend. But believing is seeing. Uh, Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Friend, I couldn't see and didn't understand everything until I just believed by faith. Uh, and then by faith, I was able to lay out some spiritual eyes upon some things that I never could see before. Uh, friend, you see it's a definite statement. Friend, but I want to say it's a defining statement. But we see Jesus. He's that little word we right there. Uh, uh, friend, that ain't the whole world, friend, but that's us that are born again, saved by the grace of God. That's a defining statement, friend. I'm glad that we, us as part of the family of God, those that are born again, saved by the grace of God, we can lay eyes upon Him by faith. Uh, friend, we can see 
see it. It's a delightful statement today though, friend. You see, I can lay eyes upon him, not physical eyes. I've never seen him with my physical eye, friend, but by the eye of faith, uh, I've seen the rose of Sharon and the lid of the valley. Uh, friend, as I've walked through some hard times in my life, uh, I saw somebody able to come along beside me, help me, encourage me, guide me, direct me, help me, love me, uh, be there for me, friend. I'm glad, friend, that I've been able to see him. It's a delightful statement. Isaiah said, his name shall be called wonderful. Amen. I'm glad that that's what he is. He is wonderful today. He said, he said his name shall be called counselor. There's not a better counselor, friend, than Jesus Christ. I'm glad that we've got one we can go to and we can find some help, friend, in time of need. He's, he's a mighty God. Friend, there's nothing that's outside of the realm of his power and his ability, friend. That's who he is today, friend. It's a delightful statement. Amen. 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 We see that. We live in a day and time today of distractions. You look around us today, there's so many distractions. Friend, every time I get up in the morning, I have to be careful. My, my phone's my alarm clock. And I don't know if you're like that or not, but if my, if, if my little old puny mind ever gets distracted, it's hard for me to ever get back. And I'll wake up in the mornings and, and I'll have emails and I'll have messages from over there because it's already about midday over there. And, uh, and some of our folks over there are burning up my phones. So if I ain't careful, I'll get up and I'll go to answering emails. I'll go to answering messages. And I'll get so busy with ministry that I'll forget the main thing. And friend, I have to get up every morning and I have to cut off the distractions and I have to take some time to get along with him and get a hold of him. I believe we ought to start our day with him, amen. But I'm saying there's some distractions today. And boy, the devil will make sure that you're distracted from seeing him. And you see, we live not only a day of distractions, but a, a day of discouragement. Amen. Boys, we travel around. We see, we, we, we see uh, what all is going on in this day and time. Uh, uh, friend, there's Christians that are discouraged. There's pastors that are discouraged. Uh, uh, friend, there's people that are discouraged. Friend, we're living in a day of discouragement. Friend, I can look in the mirror and I know my faults and my failures and I get discouraged. If I get to look into myself, I'll get discouraged. Amen. Friend, it's a day of discouragement. Not only that, it's a day of depression. We hear more about suicides and things today. I'm talking about among God's people that depression is a real thing. You see, they wanted to lock us up and keep us separated so we couldn't meet. And you know what happens then? You, you get isolated from the people of God, the family of God, friend. Uh, that all kinds of things start coming in your mind. You see, we, I know when we come home about time everything shut down and we did like everybody else did. We, we, had a, we had Facebook service, one service. That didn't work. Where I live, we didn't have internet. Me and my, I remember that first morning we got up, we all got ready. And I told my family, I said, all right, if we got to do this, we're going to get up and get ready just like we're going to church. And we got ready preaching. We all sat there and it got time for it to start and the internet dropped. I said, this is the first and last time we do this. We're going to just have church, amen, if it's just our family. Then we started having it in the parking lot. I mean, that was a little bit better. Amen. We did that for about two weeks, and that didn't work. Amen. Our preacher said, hey, this is, this is over. He said, I don't care what you're saying. We're going back in the church house. Amen. There's something about meeting with God's people. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't the same. I, I, as we drive up and down the road, I, I like to listen to preaching and all on the road. But, and, and it's good, but it's not like being there. You're not going to feel what you feel by being there. It ain't the same. You can't record the Holy Ghost moving in a service. You can't do it. Friend, but you see, we live in a day of depression, a day of discouragement, a day of destruction. You see, the devil, he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And we're living in a day of destruction today. He's trying to destroy ministries. He's trying to destroy uh, lives and, and marriages and homes. And, and that's what he's doing. He's, we're living in a day of destruction today. We're living in a day of division. Preacher, I've never seen something divide the church so much as I have in these days. Not doctrinal. I, I, I believe, friend, if, they, if the doctor's wrong, then, then there ought to be a division. I believe we ought to divide and separate from some false doctrine. I believe that. But friend, when we get divided over, over uh, and, and preacher, you help me, if you tell me to hush if I'm wrong. We get divided over masks and, and vaccines and all that. And when that goes to causing division in the church, we've got some problems, church. Amen. But that's the day we're living in today. But verse 9, 
but we see Jesus. We need to see him. And I want to preach for just a minute on, on seeing him. As I look through the Bible, I want to give you some in the Bible that, that saw him. Friends, some in the Bible that saw him, and then I want to come back in my little small mind whenever the Bible tells me to do something or, or I can do something or I have something, my little mind, I try to figure out how. I want to know how. And so that's what I want to preach on, how to see Jesus this morning. But I want to look at, in the Bible, we see those that saw him. I think about in Genesis chapter 32, uh, we, we see Jacob over there. You know, Jacob, uh, uh, you know, he's a conniving and scheming, and, and he stole the blessing from his brother and stole the birthright, and, and he heard that Esau was going to kill him as soon uh, as, his, as his parents died, and, and they warned him, and he left and went to pay down Ram for 20 years and stayed there. God showed him. He wore out his welcome there, by the way. Amen. And and God told him, said, I want you to rise, go back. And as he headed back, he headed back home, back to Canaan land, and he got word. He sent word to Esau that he was coming home, and, and word came back to him that Esau was coming with 400 men. It wasn't a welcoming party. It was a war party, by the way. And, 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 and Jacob tried, just like he always had, to try to figure it out and work things out, and he started sending gifts over, and, and, and they wrestled, and that night he was left there by the brook Jabbok, by that ford Jabbok. And Jabbok means empty by the way Amen. and you see before you ever see the Lord and see God do anything in your life you're going to have to get yourself empty Amen. you're going to have to get to the end of yourself many times and the Bible said he was there alone and there wrestled a man with him that night I believe that was a pre-incarnate Christ I believe it was none other than Jesus Christ that Jacob wrestled with when he come to the end of himself and he couldn't figure it out he couldn't do it no more and he got to the end of himself and he wrestled with God and he said I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me and the Bible said he touched him in the hollow of his thigh, friend. And, 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 the, and if you'll go on there, and it said, and he halted upon his thigh the yeah. rest of his days. Right. I ain't going to preach that, but, but there's a lot of preaching there. But friend, I'm telling you, when Jacob met God, when he saw God face to face, uh, it changed his walk. Yeah. Uh, friend, I'm telling you, if we'll, if we'll get our eyes fixed upon him and see him who is invisible, yeah. see him who is the almighty, it'll change our walk. Yeah. Uh, I remember January the 31st, 2004, when I got saved by the grace of God, born again friend I got up from that altar I walked different from that day friend I didn't do the same things I used to do I didn't go to the places I used to go I didn't listen to the things I used to there was something different about my life and my walk friend friend it'll change your walk Isaiah chapter 6, you know these passages. Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, Isaiah said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord Amen. setting upon a throne uh, high and lifted up there. A uh, friend, he saw the Lord. Uh, Isaiah was in a place where he was doing ministry, serving God, but he had his eyes on other things. Uh, a friend, and God had to take some things out of his life. Some things had to die in his life uh, and then he saw the Lord. Amen. You see Isaiah, and then he Went on down, God cleansed him there, and he recognized how bad he was. And that's what'll happen when we see God. Amen. We get a view of him, of his holiness and his righteousness and who he really is, friend. We'll just see how wicked and how vile we really are. Amen. I ain't got nothing to boast about other than him, friend. He is the holy one. He is the righteous one. But Isaiah then heard, heard the Lord say, Whom shall we send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah, his will had been changed, friend, when he saw the Lord. He said, Here am I, Lord. Send me. Friend, I'm telling you, when Jacob saw the Lord, it changed his walk. When Isaiah saw the Lord, it changed his will, friend. I think about Acts chapter 9. Saul of Tarsus was on his way to Damascus. He had letters from the chief priests and he was headed down there, a friend to arrest, uh, to arrest uh, 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 those of the early church there. Imprison them, arrest them, kill them, whatever he could do to them. He was fighting with everything that he could against the church. He was in a warfare. He had lost an all out warfare on the church. But I'm glad, friend, that God knows how to knock us off our high horse sometimes. That's exactly what happened, friend. God showed up, uh, knocked him off his high horse, uh, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And what would thou have me to do? Uh, uh, friend, I'm telling you, when he met the Lord, uh, uh, it changed Jacob's walk. Uh, it changed Isaiah's will. But when Saul of Tarsus met him, it changed his warfare. Amen. He was no longer in the army for the world uh, and the wickedness, but he got in the fight for right. Amen. He wasn't no longer kicking against the pricks, uh, but he's fighting the flesh and fighting the devil, friend. It changed his warfare. I'm telling you, we need to see Jesus this morning. 
You come over to Revelation chapter 1, you see John on the Isle of Patmos. He had done been uh, exiled there and he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Ain't it good to be filled and in the Spirit on God's day? Amen. That's the way we ought to be. Uh, it takes some preparation to get in the Spirit on the Lord's day. It don't happen on Sunday morning, by the way. It begins on Saturday. Amen. If we're going to be right on Sunday, we better start on Saturday. But he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And the Bible said he heard a voice behind him. And he turned. And it's like if you'll read those verses, it's like he was struggling trying to describe who he was seeing. He was seeing not just the resurrected Lord, but the glorified Lord. He'd never seen anything like that. Oh, what a day that'll be. Friend, when we lay eyes on him, that is unlike anything else we've ever seen. I imagine we'll have struggle, we'll struggle trying to describe it too. Amen. But he saw it, and the Bible said he fell on his face before him as a dead man. He said, Boy, I walked with him for three and a half years. Uh, but I've never saw him like this. Uh, I listened to him for three and a half years, uh, but I've never heard nothing like this. Uh, one day, friend, I'm glad I heard a still small voice one day. Uh, uh, but one day, I'm going to see him as he is. Uh, thank God, friend. And it changed his worship when he saw him. Friend, I'm telling you, but we see Jesus. Friend, I'm telling you, if we'll get a view of him in this day and time, we can still have revival in this day and time. We can still see the power of God move in this day and time. We can still see sinners saved in this day and time. We've got to get our eyes fixed upon him, get our eyes off of them, and get our eyes back on him. But we see Jesus. How can we see him? That's my question. Whenever I see something like that, preacher, I'm simple-minded. I'm not deep, amen. I'm unable to get deep. I might drown if I get too deep, amen. I love to hear deep preaching, but I, I'm not one of them. I'm simple-minded, amen. Hey, but I thank God. I ask myself, how can I see Him? Boy, ain't you glad? People say, well, I can't understand the King James Bible. You can if you get the author on the inside. I'm glad when I don't understand something, when I'm studying, I can just say, Lord, I need some help with this. Well, I'm glad that same still small voice that spoke to me when I was lost. Uh, hey, that spoke to me when I was messed up and corrected me. That same one that spoke to me and commissioned me and sent me. I'm glad that still small voice still speaks to me when I read my Bible. Amen. I'm, I still, you would call me charismatic if you want to, but I, I still believe God speaks to us today. I believe he does do it through that word, friend, but I thank, I thank God that he speaks to me. Amen. If you've never heard him speak to you today, I'm praying for you, friend. Friend, because God will speak to you if you'll let him. But he showed me, and just simple minded here, simple. How can we see him? I want, to, I want to give you a few ways we can see him today. We need to get our eyes back on him, church. We see him, number one, in the pages of Scripture. You know, this is a hymn book, not an H Y M N book. But a capital H, capital I, capital M book. This is all about Him. Genesis and Revelation. This book is about Him. Friend, from the beginning to the end, it's about Him. He's the Alpha, uh, he's the Alpha and the Omega, friend. He, he's the beginning and the ending. Amen. He's all the way through it. It's about Him. A.W. Tozer said this. Uh, if you look close enough, you'll find Jesus on every page. Uh, he said if you miss Him on one, you'll find Him twice on the next. Uh, friend, this is a hymn book, friend. We find Him in this book. Uh, uh, friend, as I look through this book, I find him creating. Amen. He is the one that created all things. Uh, uh, friend, Jesus is the one uh, that stepped out on nothing, friend, and spoke everything into existence. You don't believe me? Look at chapter 1 of Hebrews verse 2. Uh, it says everything was made by him, friend. He, we see him creating. Well, we see him as we look through the scriptures. We see him condemning sin. You know, God hates the way. He, he's angry with the wicked every day. God hates sin. Friend, I'm, that's how God feels about it. We ought to feel about sin the same way God does. Amen. We see him there, but we see God in the pages of scriptures calling out a people. In the Old Testament, he called out Israel. He, he called Abraham from Ur of the Chaldees, uh, and he called out a nation. Friend, in the New Testament, we hear him calling out a church today. Uh, he's calling out a people, friend. That's what he's doing all over this country today as preachers are standing and preaching the gospel, friend. God is a calling a people unto himself. Uh, he's saying, come unto me, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, thank God. Friend, he's calling out a people. Friend, he's, he, he, he's, he's, he's convicting those of sin through the person of the Holy Ghost. They are three in one, one in the same, friend, but that's what he's doing. 
when the Holy Ghost has come, He'll reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. That's what God's doing. Amen. Friend, He's what He's doing today. We see Him in the pages of Scripture, friend, uh, uh, converting those that are repentant today. Amen. Those that are coming to Him, repentance and faith, He's saving them. Amen. Friend, we see Him comforting the hurting in the pages of Scriptures. I don't know about you, but that encourages me. I think about after Jesus was resurrected. Yes. We see two disciples on the road to uh, Emmaus, discouraged, downhearted, a friend about ready to quit. But God cared enough about them to come along beside them, to take time to come along beside two of his disciples and encourage them to open the word of God. That's where your comfort's going to come from, by the way. And, and begin to talk to them. A friend, they got a ghost, a, a case of Holy Ghost heartburn. That's what God will do, friend. He comforts those that are hurting. Friend, I'm glad he cares for us. Uh, the Bible said in 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. You don't know where you see Christ at. You see him in the pages of Scripture. Friend, I want to say secondly, friend, not only the pages of Scripture, we see him in the place of the sinner. Look at verse 9. It says, but he was made a little lower than angels for the suffering of death. Friend, we see him in the place of the sinner. He wasn't suffering for anything that he had done. He wasn't suffering for any of his crimes. You know whose sins it was? Yours. Mine. We see him in the place of the sinner. He took my shame. For God hath made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. John cried over there in John 129. Says behold the Lamb of God yes. that taketh away the sin of the world. Ah. The Jews knew something about a lamb. Every year they brought a lamb at Passover time. And that lamb was slain and that blood was applied to the mercy seat and, and that covered their sins for one year. Amen. But John didn't say, behold, a lamb. He said, behold, yes. the lamb. Amen. He didn't say that would cover their sins for a year. He said, but taketh away. Yes. He didn't say the sins of the Jews. They understood that. But he said the sins of the world. Friend, I'm telling you, we see him in the place of the sinner. That's where he's at today. Thank God, friend, if you want to see him, he's, he, he, he hung on Calvary. We find him in the, in, there, in the place of the sinner there. Thank God, friend, that he took my place. Uh, he suffered my separation as he hung on Calvary's cross. And it went dark. Uh, and he cried, For my, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Friend, he suffered separation as God turned his face away from the sun so that I could have access. Uh, thank God, friend. He died so that I could have life. We see him in the place of the sinner, friend. If you've never been saved by the grace of God, friend, he took your place, friend. He died your death so that you could have life, friend. He loved you and he gave himself for you, friend. We see him in the place of the sinner. I want to say this. This is real close to the second one, but we see him in the propitiation. You see, we serve a holy God and a just God. A righteous God. And I got some news for you. God, preacher, is not going to overlook sin. He's not going to just wink at your sin. He's not going to just excuse your sin. The Bible said in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. God's not going to change His word for us no matter how good we may seem. God's not going to change His word for none of us. The wages of sin is death. God said, because you're a sinner, you must die. Amen. But I got some good news for you. First John 2, 2 says, it, but he is propitiation for our sins. Not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. You know what that word propitiation was? I had to struggle with it for a long time. Let me give you the Alpaba cotton patch definition of this. It's a satisfying of a debt. We owed a debt we couldn't pay. We was guilty. We were sinners. And we was going to die. But there was one. They stepped in. Said, Father, I'll take their place. I want to read a verse to you out of, he, out of Isaiah 53 verse 10. Says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Verse 11 says, 
He shall see the travail of his soul Amen. and be satisfied. Amen. When God looked upon Jesus, Amen. he was satisfied. Amen. That dead is satisfied. Amen. Thank God, friend, we see him in the propitiation. Amen. You know how we can be accepted? In the beloved today, how we can have access today is because our sin debt was satisfied on Calvary, friend. Friend, I thank God when I stand before the judgment seat of Christ one day as a believer, I'll not give an account of one of my sins, not any of them, friend. They was all future at that time, friend. God judged every one of them on Calvary. That debt was satisfied in Jesus Christ. He is a propitiation for my sin, not for mine only, but for the sins of the whole world. You won't say, what do you do? in Uganda. We take that message over there, friend. The gospel works in Uganda. It works in Africa. It works in Asia. It works in America, friend. We need to get back to preaching just as simple, plain gospel that God loves sinners. He died in their place and He'll receive everyone that will come unto Him in repentance and faith. Friend, you see, we see him in the in the propitiation. Let me give you a couple more. We see him. We see him in, in verse twelve. He says, I says, saying, "I will declare thy name and thy brethren in the midst of the church. Will I sing praises unto thee?" We see him in the praises of his people. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Psalms twenty two verse three says, "Thou art holy, O Lord, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel." I believe that we can make an application out of that verse. I've been taught it all my life. I, I, I believe it, uh, friend, uh, that we can not only say Israel, but we can say His people there. I believe God inhabits the praises of His people. Amen. Brother Stenard Blue told me this as a young preacher. I hadn't been called to preach very long. I asked Brother Stenard, I said, I said, preacher, give me some advice. He, he, he said, son, he said, here's two things. He said, prayer brings the power of God. Praise brings the presence of God. He said, you need to hang around the throne of God till the God of the throne hangs around you. Amen. He said, that's where your power is going to come from. He said, find your pine thicket, a rock altar. Lay on your face before God until God touches your life. He said, but then when you come into the house of God, he said, come in with a praise on your lips. Lift up holy hands. A oh, friend, something about that praise. Friend, God likes that. Somebody might say, well, give me Bible on that. Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me give you an Old Testament example and a New Testament example. Second Chronicles chapter 20, we see Jehoshaphat, the good king. Three kings coming against him, Second Chronicles chapter 20. Read it when you go home tonight. Amen. Give you some Bible reading for this afternoon. Three kings coming against him. He said, and he turned to God. Boy, a good place to turn when you don't know what to do. When you don't know what to do, turn to God. He said, Lord, we don't know what to do. Neither have we no power against this might. Neither know we what to do. And they begin to pray. He proclaimed a fast. Boy, it's a good thing when you get back to praying and fasting when we don't know what to do. That's what he did. And friend, the Bible said that God sent a word to him. Boy, aren't you glad God's got a word? I'm glad that God answers prayer. Amen. God will send you a word. And he said, you ain't got to worry about this. I'm paraphrasing there. Go home and read it for yourself. As my preacher always said, I ain't got time to read your Bible for you. You read it. Amen. Hey, but you go home and read it there. He said, he said I'm just paraphrasing here. He said, you ain't got to fight in this. He said, boys, this ain't your fight. This is mine. And, and, and oh, Jehoshaphat said, all right, Lord. And he told the people, he said, he said, all right, we ain't got a fear, just believe the Lord. And when they went out to battle the next day, they didn't send the Navy SEALs out. They didn't send the 82nd Airborne. That ain't who went first. You know who the temple of the Spirit was? Uh, he said, I said, I want some singers up here. He said, I want some folks up here to praise God. Uh, he said, I want you to lead us in the battle. And he put those, those Levites and those praisers and those singers. And the Bible said this, and when they praised God, the answer hadn't come, but they praised Him. They hadn't got delivered, but they praised Him. The, the, you see, the, the, the victory hadn't come, but they praised Him. The Bible said when they praised God, God sent ambushments against the enemy. When they praised Him. Amen. Friend, you see, you might be in a battle today. You might be wondering what, what in the world to do today. I said, why don't you just go ahead and praise God? Amen. I, you see, I've, uh, when I was in school, uh, they'd give us book reports. And, and, and I'm probably messing up here. Of course, my boys ain't here no more. I used to be careful about that. They're out of school now, but they give us the book reports. You know what I'd do? I'd, I'd, I'd look through the index, of the titles of the chapter. And then I might read the first chapter and, and then I'd read the end chapter. And I'd try to figure out what that story was about. 
and I'd do my book report. And, and for somehow or another, I passed doing that. Amen. Y'all, y'all kids don't do that. That's not a good idea. But that's what I did. Amen. Amen. But you know what? I've already read the end of the book. Amen. I've already seen what's going to happen. I've already got a word from God. It's going to be all right, church. We're going to win in this thing. We ought to just go ahead and praise Him today. He inhabits the praises of His people. I'll give you a New Testament real quick. Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas serving God, doing what God told them to do. And I mean, I mean, serving the Lord in the middle of the will of God. And friend, a lot of folks think, well, in the middle of the will of God, everything's going to be good. If you're doing what God told you to do, everything's going to be great. You better back up if you think that. Because those that's on the front lines, friend, I found out the hard way. On the front lines, that's where the battle's the hottest. You've got a, you've got a bullseye on your front and your back, your side. Friend, I'm telling you, that's where the battle's going to be. And they were serving God. And the devil got in on it. Now, you know the story. They was locked up. They was beaten, locked up in the inner part of the prison. If that had been me, I'm just being honest with you, I'd probably been on the horn with my pastor. I'd probably been uh, wanting to use a phone call to call my mission board. I'd been calling the embassy. I said, get me out of here. Get me on the first plane back to America. I'm done. They don't want to hear the gospel. I don't want to give it to them. Amen. That's just the way I'd been. Amen. I'm just, I, I, I hope if God ever puts me in that, that I'll have the grace that they had. And, and I have been locked up twice. That's another story for another time on the mission field. It wasn't my fault, mind you. I was locked up for somebody else. But anyway, uh, missionaries, uh, they shouldn't have a criminal record, but I do. Amen. Amen. But it wasn't me. I'll tell you that later. Amen. I ain't got time to run that rabbit. But anyway, but here they was, locked up, beaten. You know what they did? They prayed, Amen. sang praises. Amen. They didn't praise them because God released them. They hadn't been released. Amen. The victory hadn't come, That's right. but they praised him. Yes. You know what happened when they praised him? I believe God looked over the banisters of heaven. Yes. Said, I think I'm going to go get in on some of that down there. Yes. Friend, you know the story there. But I'm telling you, where we find God at, we find Him in the praises of His people. Let me speed up here. Y'all listening too slow. Amen. Look at verse, look at verse 11. Say, here we, we see Him here. Verse 11 says, For both He that sanctifieth, that's God, and they that are sanctified, that's us, are all of one. Friend, I'm glad that I'm in Christ. And He's in me. Book of Ephesians says, I'm already seated together in heavenly places. When God looks over at Jesus, He sees me in Him. I don't understand all that. I never will understand all that. I don't understand that, but I believe that. Amen. He's representing me before the Father. Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm in Him up there, but He's in me down here. He's representing me before the Father. I'm representing Him down here. Friend, I'm telling you where we can see Christ at. This world should be able to see Christ in us that are believers. They should see Christ in the way we walk, the way we talk, in our witness, in our words, friend. They ought to see Christ. You see, the Bible said they was first called Christians in Antioch. It was by those on the outside. They looked at them and looked at their lives and said, something about them reminds us of that Jesus Christ. What about our life? Does our life remind others of Christ? We see Him not only in the people that are saved, in the praises of His people, in the propitiation, in the place of the sinner, in the pages of Scripture. You see, I'm glad I didn't tell you how many I had. Amen. I ain't going to tell you how many more I got neither. Amen. No, I'm at the last one. Y'all hold on. But we see Him in the power on the throne. On the throne. You see, believing is seeing. Bible tells us that's where he's at today. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is in charge and he's in control today. And throughout these, next, these rest of these verses, we see what he's doing. Verse 14 says, For as much sin as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. You know what he's on the throne doing today? He's destroying the works of the devil. You know what happens every time somebody gets born again? Now the work of the devil's destroyed. Yeah. You know what happens every time a Christian that's backslidden and just got away from God, every time they repent and come back to God, another work of the devil destroyed. 
That's what he's doing today. He's destroying the works of the devil, friend. He's declaring some things through his men here on earth. Verse 12 says, saying, I will declare unto them uh, thy name unto thy brethren. He's declaring that he is the I am today. He's declaring that He is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, that's what He's doing today. He's declaring the gospel of who He is, friend, what He's done. Friend, but we see He's delivering today. Look at verse 15. And delivered them through whose fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. I heard somebody say the other day, so we shouldn't see folks get saved out of fear. I don't know about you, but uh, friend, you can't get saved until you get lost. I believe that. And you know one of the most fearful things in this world is to be lost. If you've ever been truly lost, I, be, I was coon hunting one night by myself, 15-year-old boy. Daddy let me drive down there, and, and I was in competition hunting at that time, and, and I wanted to keep my dog tuned up, didn't have nobody to go with me, so I went hunting. I remember we turned loose over on the Tallapoosa River. That dog went over, over some of those hills, and those big old bluffs over in there, and got out of here, and I walked in there at night to find him, and and, and when I started coming out that night, battery in my light was dying, and I lost all track of direct sense of direction. Wasn't a star out that night. And I walked and I walked and I walked and I, I, I started passing places that I'd been before. You know what happened? I started getting, there started to be something rising up in me, fear. And it started taking hold of me. I started walking faster and faster. And it's amazing, you hear all kinds of stuff. <laughs> There's all kind of stuff. I heard Sasquatch and everything else in those bushes that night. But it's a fearful thing to be lost. But I remember when I was, I, was, I was getting convicted of my sin, preacher. When the Lord convicted me of my sin. Showed me that I was on the way to hell. And I needed a Savior. There was a fear that gripped my soul. Friend, if there's never been that in your life, then you might ought to check up because... God will bring you. He has to bring you to a place that you're lost. Amen. Amen. You see, I'm all about soul winning. We do it. Amen. Sure. But it's a whole lot more than just talking into somebody and praying a prayer, preacher. Amen. If God don't get in on that somewhere, friend, I, I've made a profession before when I was a boy. I, pray, I, I prayed a prayer. I said the exact words that somebody told me to pray. And I, I, I meant it with my heart, preacher. I was a nine-year-old boy. And it wasn't just something I was, I, I meant it. I wanted to go to heaven. I meant it. But you know what? I found out I was baptized. I was a church member. I found out there wasn't nothing to it. I got in to be a teenager. I found out I could sin. I could do everything. As long as I didn't get caught, it didn't bother me. You say that was no, wasn't nothing but a profession. But at 26 years old, God the Holy Ghost arrested my soul. Showed me it was a holy and righteous God. And I was a sinner and I was against Him and I was an enemy and I was lost and on my way to hell. But He also showed me a, a bloody Calvary, a Savior that loved me and died for me. Friend, I'm telling you, say, what's that? He's, he's on the throne today, friend, declaring some things. And he's destroying some things, but he's delivering some today. That's where he's at, friend, to deliver those who through fear of death. Friend, I'm telling you, God's there to save today. He's able to deliver. Friend, but I want to give you this and I'm done. He's there to defend. Look at verse 18. Friend, that he himself has suffered being tempted. He is able to secure them that are tempted. That word means to help. I sure am glad there's a God in heaven that wants to help you and me. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. Boy, I thank God for mercy. I need it every day. And find grace to help in time of need. You don't know where we... That verse 9 says, but we see Jesus. You know where we see Him at today, church? We see Him in this Bible. See Him in the pages of Scripture. We see Him in the place of the sinner. We see Him in the propitiation for our sins. We see Him in the praises of His people. We see Him in the people of God that are saved. But we see Him in power on the throne. God's there to deliver. God's there to help. God's there today. What do you need from Him today? I'm going to turn it over to the preacher. What do you need today? I hope God will take this and use it this morning to help you. 
God's able this morning. If you need to be saved, God's able to save you. If you need help today, God's able to help you. Maybe you just need to get your eyes fixed upon Him. But we see Jesus. God, help us to get our eyes fixed back on Him. Preacher, you come. Oh, wasn't that good? Praise the Lord for the good preaching this morning. Uh, Sandy feet, if you will, please. We'll have a. I want Miss Melissa to least sing. Would you sing the? Just sing the first verse. If someone comes, continue on. We'll do it that way, just like we do a normal invitation. She's gonna sing Hallelujah, I found him. And I love that song. Be appropriate talking about the Lord Jesus. And uh, the big thing that I noticed when he gave a testimony at nine, I didn't get saved and made a profession. He said, I want to go to heaven. He saw heaven. If you're not saved this morning, you don't need to see heaven. You need to see Jesus. And I understand I want to go to heaven. Nobody in their right mind wants to go to hell. Not, it's a, but seeing heaven is not going to get you there. You're going to have to see the way, which is Jesus. But we see Jesus. Lord, we love you this morning. If there's anybody here that's lost without Jesus, please, Lord, help them to see clearly the Son of God as he has finished the work that needs to be done on their behalf for them to be saved. All they must do is believe on him whom God has sent. And so we love you again this morning. Thank you for saving us at our saved. Help us to praise you and be more thankful than we are. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need to come, you come on as she sings. My strength was almost gone Longed my soul for something better Only still to hunger on Hallelujah, I have found Him Who my soul so long has craved Jesus said By his blood I now am saved. Poor I was and sought for riches, something that would satisfy. But the dust I gathered round me only mocked my soul's sad cry. Oh, well of water, ever springing, bread of life so rich and free, untold wealth that never fell us, my Redeemer is to be. Satisfies my longings by his blood. I now am saved. Amen. Well, it's been, it's been a good morning, hasn't it? It's good to be here. Thank you for coming. It's encouraged, so encouraging to see all of you this morning. We love you and uh, I want to encourage you to please come back tonight. Brother Ron Young's going to be preaching. And you're not going to want to miss that. I'm telling you, we're blessed that he chose here to stop by on his way home. And uh, so try to be here. You'll get, a, you'll get a blessing. Another great Bible message. Thank you for the Bible preaching this morning. Hope that encourages you. Get your eyes on the Lord. Get off all this other stuff and just focus on the Lord and have you a good day today. We'll see you back tonight, 530 Men's Pray to Room. Uh, before we go, can we cut the live stream? And just give me a thumbs up when it's off. Thumbs up has been given. Bro